Hi folks, Pat here, um, aka Bowbender on Archery Talk and PMM422 here on YouTube. Um, today I want to do a video about how I determine the lengths of both my cables and strings when I'm building a Franken bow. And a Franken bow, let's give you a quick background on it. A Franken bow is basically a bow that you're putting together using parts from whatever. To, can be different manufacturers, different eras of the same bow, bow manufacturer, just a configuration that isn't a normal specified configuration. So you're building a bow that you have no idea, you know, what the actual specs should be. Um, and this can be this can be fun. It's a great little experiment to understand how compound bows work and and give you some insight as to what happens when you change cable length and and string length, that sort of thing. Um, it's great, great learning experience, so I highly recommend it. Um, you can usually find some really inexpensive parts on eBay to fiddle around with. So today we're working with the Riterra um, bow. I'm not even sure that it came with these with these uh, with these particular limbs. Uh, I did find somebody on the internet that had a similar setup, and they had set their bow up to be uh, an uh, axle to axle of 35 inches. So I set this bow up to be uh, on my bow press here to, to be compressed to be about 35 inches and you can see that there's a there's a nice compression to the limbs that looks to be about right to me so um, I'm gonna go with that it, it might not be right but um, it's it's right enough right it's my bow I'm building it so I love it I think that looks great so I'm going with 35 axle to axle and if I don't like the the uh, brace height, I can shorten the axle to axle later and try a shorter set of strings and cables and see how that particular item performs. It's all about experimentation at this point. So um, in order for me to, to get it set up at so 35 inch 8A, um, I got it pressed and now the next thing I want to do is put the cams in the orientation that they should be in when the bow is strung. Now to do that, you can do a couple things. You can look up on the, uh, Google Images is great. You, you can search on the names of the cams or the bow that they came off of, and a lot of times you'll come up with an image that shows a, a bow um, strung and in, in its original spec condition. And from that, you can sort of identify what the rotation of the cam should be. In this case, I have a, a manual from Martin that shows how the, the cams are laced up and the approximate orientation that they're that they're expected to be on when they're strung on a bow. So it's simple, right? I have I have um, as good a documentation as you can expect for that. So what I've done is um, I've set this side up so that it doesn't move. And the way that I've done that is to use a set of wedges, okay? And if you're a carpenter or whoever watched a carpenter, they basically use wedges like this between the, the sides of a, a, window a window frame to hold it in place while they nail it up, or a door jam for that matter. So um, it's just a technique to, to wedge um, the device together to keep it from moving. In this case, um, I put a couple pieces of tape on this cam to show you where what rotation I want it in. And um, I'm going to use these these wedges to hold it in place. So to start with, I'm going to put one on the back side and I'll rotate the cam to get it to about where I want it. And then I'm going to put a wedge in on this side and I'll press that in. Make sure I get it in the orientation I want. And when you're putting those on, you got to make sure that the, the wedges themselves don't interfere with the posts that that the cable or the string would go on. So um, I've set this up now and now that cam is wedged in there and it's not going to move. So now I have the bow set up. Um, if you can use your imagination a little bit here, the bow is essentially strung, right? The cables are, aren't there and the, and the string obviously aren't there, but everything else is in the exact position it would be when you, when you do have it strung. That's how it's going to look. So I'm going to take a quick glance at that and say, yeah, that's how I want it to look. And so now I'm going to basically put in a faux cable. I'm going to string this up and put it on there to see how long, how, what's the distance between the, the posts. It'll identify that distance and that should be a, my approximate size of the cables that I need. So to do that, I'm simply going to lace this up. And I'm using the, my reference material here from Martin to identify where those cables go and how they're expected to be laced on the bow. And now I have that laced on there and it's in a nice little S-curve just like the, the documentation shows. 
And then I'm going to come back down to this cam and I'm going to stretch the, the string out. I put a lot of pressure on it, just, just enough to, to get it taut. And then I'm going, to, I'm going to mark this end down here. And to mark that, I'm going to use a piece of tape. This piece of tape right where that, oops, right where that cam's ending. Okay, just like that. So essentially at the, at the outside edge of where the cam is, that's where I'm putting my piece of tape. All right, now I gotta take that off of there so I can measure it. I already know how, what size this is supposed to be, but generally speaking, we're gonna to toss it on a tape measure here and look at it, and it comes out to be about uh, 40 and a quarter. So we'll just mark up here 40 inches and one quarter. One of the things that I know, in some cases the cables aren't the same, right? You'll have one that's 40 and a quarter and the other one's 39 and an eighth. They're two different dimensions depending on the style of cam. In this case, I looked it up for this particular cam. It lists the cables as being the same length. So uh, in this case, I know that that's going to be the size of both, both cables. And I can measure the other way and average between the two, but we're going to go with 40 and a quarter. That's, that's uh, fine for this purpose. Okay, now I want to I want to measure the distance on here for the string. So again, we're going to line this up and put it on our post back here. Place it all the way up as per the lacing spec in the manual there. And like I said, you can use all sorts of different methods for understanding how a cam is supposed to be labeled. You can use pictures, that works too. Okay, and there's a post back here and I'm just going to pinch it here where I want that, that mark to be. And again, I'll just put a piece of tape on there to ensure that I have that distance. Okay. Once again, we'll unlace that from the can. We'll toss this on the tape measure. And it comes out to 57 inches. So we'll mark that up there, 57 inches. And now as I'm building, I have some reference material to look back on to make sure that I make it to the, to the right size. And then I'll string it up and I'll test it, do some test firings to see how the bow performs. And typically it's pretty close. I, I, I would say probably 40-50% of the time I get it right the first time. But one of the things that can help you get it right the first time is um, is to actually not start with a new string. You can, you can use um, some old clunker strings that you have laying around. I have a ton of them because I make my own strings and I occasionally screw up. Um, so I have a bunch of screw ups laying on my wall here and from what I've heard that's not uncommon. Um, but if you have a string that's close, it's a little bit long, let's say you have one that's an inch long. One of the things that you can do is just simply tie a knot in it. That's it. That's all there is to it. Tie a knot in it and that will reduce the length of the string depending on the, the how many threads are in the string. That will reduce the string length. Um, and you can measure it before and after to get an idea how much that knot removes. And if you need more, put another knot in it. And if you get it relatively close, within a quarter of an inch or so, you can simply uh, add more twists to the string and that will shorten it up. So um, by doing that, you can now come up with a set of cables that are relatively close to what you measured out and you can string the bow up just to test to see if, hey, is that really, is that really close to what I want? And if it is, then you can go to your string jig and, and build out a, a nice, pretty, beautiful set that matches the, the lengths that you measured and, and string the bow up. Uh, so that's essentially how I go about identifying the lengths of the cables and the strings that I, that I need for a Franken bow when I'm setting it up. Okay, one of the things that you can do for me that'd be really great, I uh, almost forgot about this, is down in the little doobly-doo bar down there, there's a button that has a thumb like that. If you press that, that'd be great. It really helps me with my YouTube ratings. And uh, if you want to share this on YouTube, that'd be doubly great. Uh, really, really, really helps out with the YouTube ratings, and I, I definitely appreciate it. So if you have any questions, there's a, a cool forum, both the DIY forum and the Frankenbow forum on Archery Talk. 
Uh, both great resources to, to find out how you put together a Franken bow. And uh, it's your opportunity to really get to know and understand the, the technology behind compound bows. And I highly recommend that you, that you mess around with them. So um, if you have any questions, write them down in the, uh, in the comment section. I'll be sure to reply if I can. Thank you. Have a good day.